Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Having a dog with anxiety can be something that is hard on both the dogs and the owners. Um, Purina did a recent survey that found that 62% of dog owners reported seeing behaviors that could be signs of anxiety in their pets, such as excessive barking, compulsive jumping, uh, shaking and trembling, those kinds of behaviors. So to help combat these issues, uh, they have introduced a new supplement called Calming Care. It's actually a probiotic supplement that contains a strain of bacteria shown to help dogs maintain calm behavior. Um, this is something that's different than most over-the-counter products for anxiety issues in pets. Uh, it's certainly nothing that uh, we've seen before. So I actually wanted to have uh, a conversation with Purina's behaviorist, uh, Lisa Rodasada, and uh, ask her a little bit about the product, why it works, um, you know, probiotics we hear a lot about, they're beneficial to add to your dog's diet for uh, a number of reasons, mainly gut health and digestion. Um, but, you know, this is a, a different way to use a beneficial supplement to help calm your dog's anxiety. So uh, I definitely wanted to learn more about it. And uh, she also shares some other tips for uh, pet owners who are trying to deal with an anxious pup. My name is Dr. Lisa Wadasa. I'm a board-certified veterinary behaviorist, and many people don't know what that is. That's a veterinary psychiatrist. We are veterinarians first, right? We go to veterinary school and, and get boarded and get licensed and all of that stuff, and then we go back to do a residency in clinical behavioral medicine for animals. And I see mostly dogs, cats, and birds. Occasionally, um, I might see something really fun, like a spotted leopard or a black panther. But wow. Animal. I know. Ah, it's really fun. Like, totally fun. We do, I've seen some spotted leopards. I uh, consulted on two cheetahs, and I went in the enclosure with them. It probably wasn't smart, but it was really fun. And it was once in a lifetime. I touched a cheetah. <laughs> Their fur is not soft, by the way. So, um, uh, so anyway, that's what we do, and um, so how did I get involved in the pet industry? Well, really, I have quite a sappy and probably familiar answer. I absolutely connect with and love in just a deep way all animals, and so there really would be no other option for me. I mean, from five years old, there's, there was no option but to be a veterinarian, and then I knew behavioral medicine was right for me when I was in veterinary school. I trained dogs for, I don't, oh, I don't know, 15 years before I went to vet school. And I started really young training dogs. And so I loved that aspect. And I loved physiology. So it was a perfect, perfect match for me. And, and if people want to know about me, they should go to more. They should go to our website, which is flvetbehavior.com. And part of our mission statement at Florida Veterinary Behavior Service is to educate lay people and veterinarians and their staff. So I have tons of articles there for people who are not my clients, for anyone. Hopefully, you know, some of your listeners can get help from some of those articles we have on our website. Absolutely. And for anybody that wants to check that out, there's a link below the podcast. You can uh, click to check out the site for more information. And thank you for sharing. Uh, it is a great resource. So um, I definitely encourage everybody to check that out. Today, we're focusing on anxiety in our pets, which um, unfortunately is quite a common problem. It is. It's a very, very common problem. And I want to group, if I may, I want to group fear, anxiety, and stress together. Although the neurochemistry of those three emotional states might be different, slightly different, pretty much the same neurochemicals are involved. And it's very hard to look at someone else, whether I'm looking at you, or I'm looking at a dog, or I'm looking at a, a cockatoo. It's difficult for me to know exactly if they're fearful, stressed, or anxious. We have some clues 
but it's hard to discern. So if we can think about fear, anxiety, and stress, or anxious behaviors or fearful behaviors, I think we'll really be talking about a subject that is pertinent for all pet owners. And there are different types of anxiety as well. Some pets up uh, suffer from separation anxieties. For some, it's noise. Um, I'm sure for some, it's it's a variety of different types of anxiety. So how would you recommend uh, pet owners go about figuring out what type of anxiety their dog has and, and how best to deal with that? Yeah, that's a great question. So the answer of how to figure out what their pet has is a very simple answer. That's go to see your veterinarian. And remember that you are your pet advocate. And so if you walk in there and you say, my dog's anxious, my dog is upset when I leave, my dog's upset when he walks outside, you know, whatever, and your vet says, I don't know what to do, then you have to say, then refer me to someone who knows what to do, right? Don't assume that there is no answer because I'm telling you there's always an answer. There's always an option always. And so we don't want you to, the the pet parents, to be talking to veterinarians in a way that isn't, um, doesn't promote cure. Like, don't walk in there and say, you better put my dog on this medication or whatever, but walk in there and be ready to say, okay, I totally understand that this is not your forte. You prefer surgery or internal medicine. Please refer me to a doctor who can help. And that's really all that you need to do if your vet doesn't know what to do. So you're going to go to your vet and look for guidance, not only on what your pet has, but also what you can do. There are websites like mine, and, and, and on my website, you can link to other websites like the Ohio State University website, which is fantastic and has information not only for dogs, but also for cats. So definitely get online and read. I encourage that. Although some doctors don't, I think it's great to have an educated pet parent. However, you're going to bring that information to your veterinarian for confirmation that what you read was correct because what's on the internet is not always factual, as we all know. Absolutely. That's some great advice. And let's say that your uh, veterinarian has sent you somewhere. Um, Now you're learning more about the anxiety that your pet has. What options are there for treatment of uh, anxiety in pets? The options for treatment, and again, I'm going to combine fear, anxiety, and stress because I want to capture with this podcast every pet is suffering. In any event, the options are just limitless. First of all, there's behavioral treatment, and um, you can get behavioral treatments from a board certified veterinary behaviorist. You can go to a highly qualified dog trainer, which is controversial. Please go to our website and, and, and look at the different articles that instruct you as to how to find a good dog training professional because. Uh, there's a lot of variability in skill set. You can go to dognerds.thinkitfit.com. They have complete treatment programs there for several behavioral disorders. So we don't want to forget that um, the things you put in your dog's mouth are not the complete cure. There's also conventions you can teach. There's management. Like, for example, if your dog barks at the window, can we just walk the window? Like, simple things. Right? that you can do to lower that fear, anxiety, and stress. And finally, there's things that you put in your mouth. That's what I call them. They're put in your dog. So we're talking about medication, supplements, or nutraceutical. Uh, Purina Calming Care is from uh, Purina Veterinary Supplements, and we have used that a time on practice. That's a probiotic. So for those people that are saying, oh, Lord, I don't want to give an antidepressant to my dog, I would say, first of all, some dogs need those to be happy. Let's recognize that. But second of all, we have options, like the Purina Calming Care that we've used a ton and we're seeing good results with. We have nutraceutical options. We have as-needed medication. So I think the take-home for me to give to you, to give to those pet parents, is the options are limitless. Your dog does not have to be on a medication. You're going to have to do more than just give something right now. Your dog can get better. I don't and I don't care how bad you think he is. He can get better. Believe me. He can. 
I know there's a varying degrees of uh, anxiety in animals as well. You know, some it's it's easier to treat, while others um, you may have to try multiple different treatment options. Um, you maybe have to combine some treatment options if they have a severe case. So um, I, I love your tips for, uh, you know, reaching out to those people around you that can help you and, and really seeking a specialist who knows exactly how to help pets in this situation. Right. And, and that's an important point is what should you expect and how long will treatment be? And will your dog need two medications or or just a probiotic, uh, or what will your pet need? So here's the thing, you really won't know until you're working with someone, a veterinarian who has a very high school level and in this particular field, that's probably gonna be a specialist, a board certified veterinary behavior, probably. So your pet may need something very slight or may need two or three medications and they will say that. What I do wanna say is, in general, I wanna give some guidelines to people because I have a lot of pet parents who come in who have put their pet on something over the counter and then they say it didn't work. And I say, okay, let's talk about what expectations we should have. So my expectation from a single medication will start kind of at the top of the pyramid of, of effect is about 50% change in that animal's baseline behavior of intensity, recovery, um, and, um, and duration of behavior, right? So then if I'm thinking about a nutraceutical, a supplement, whether it be the Purina Common Care Probiotic or another supplement, I'm looking for about a 25% change. So already, if I'm looking at a pet who's moderately to severely affected, and my pet parent says, I really don't want to use the medication. I know I'm going to be layering those natural, quote unquote, whatever that means, products. I'm going to put the Trina Common Care on that case. I'm going to add in another nutraceutical, maybe solid one from Nutramax or Zilkin, instead of, you know, like I'll be layering. And so again, so important for clients to say to the veterinarian, this is who I am. This is what I'd like to try. And then the veterinarian can say, okay, you want to use natural, your pet will end up probably on two or three natural, quote unquote, I don't even know really what that means, but things that are not medication instead of one medication. And that conversation can be had on a and talk to us a little bit about calming care. Now, you mentioned it's a probiotic. How does it work? Um, what have you seen so far in pets? Yeah, so we use uh, the calming care very frequently in our practice. And when we first got in, because the study is a placebo-controlled double-blind study, right, which is your gold standard inside. But we trusted the study, and we started trying it Actually, six months before it came out, we got access to the sample. So we've been using it now for a year. So that gives us enough knowledge, our doctors and myself, that's in the practice to say we like it, we don't. So we targeted the first animal that showed clinical signs similar to the study, so pacing, whining, and barking. And we saw, and we also targeted, um, for my request to my doctors, that they also had in patients that showed any gastrointestinal stress as a result of fear, anxiety, and stress. That is not something that's been proven by the study, or they even looked at in the study, but we wanted to do that in our patient to our own knowledge. What we're seeing is that it is that extra whipped cream on the Sunday. In other words, we're giving that to patients with those clinical signs, and they might also be on a medication. They might also be on a supplement. Pretty much everybody's getting some sort of behavioral treatment as well. And what I saw yesterday, uh, I did a recheck, and what, what Barney's mom told me, Barney's a precious, precious liver and white heavenese, and his mother is devoted, um, and she's worked with him for many years. Yesterday she said, I wonder if you're a long time patient, or not. I'm like, yes, you are. So she uh, is using calming care for her dog. And what she said was, it did take about six weeks, which we know. And she said, it's just overall as that little bit where it took that rough edge off. In general, he's just happier, less likely to, to bark at visitors, shows less anxious behavior. And I would say that's pretty universal across my patients. And we are using it in patients 
with other modalities because we're specialty practice. So we're not going to see the dogs that are mildly affected. We're going to see the diseases. So they might be on a medication and also on calming care. But the results we've gotten, our clients are happy and they would tell us, because we're in Southeast Florida, which is Manhattan South, they would tell us if they were not happy and they continue to come back and ask for it for the most part. Nothing's 100%. And so certainly we have had some treatment failures. And I think that's really important to say because we want to manage expectations. But we do like it very much and we like the effect that our clients like products that are not always medication, especially if their pet is on a medication and we think the pet needs something else. They're really open to using something that's not you know, in that medication class. Sure. And what other tips would you have for pet parents who are trying to deal with anxiety in their pets? Oh my gosh, do we have eight hours? Because I could talk all day. <laughs> oh, just, no, I could just talk all day. Okay, so let me come up with maybe the my top three tips. Number one, do not put your dog in the situation that scares him and hope that he will adjust. If your dog truly has fear, anxiety, and stress, or shows anxious behavior when he's walked, let's say. Give him a vacation from that stress. If you continue to expose him without any coping tools, that's a procedure called flooding. And if you search on Google flooding dog tricks, to search that or dog learning, you'll learn all about it's extremely dangerous and pushes dogs very quickly into panic and hope. If your dog has coping tools and you're working with a qualified dog training professional or veterinary behaviorist, that's completely different. But do not just say, I'm going to, like my patient yesterday, precious, precious dog, afraid of storm. Mom said, so I took her out during a thunderstorm. I sat in the backyard. First of all, it's dangerous. It's lightning. But I sat in the backyard and I petted her and told her it was going to be okay. She said, I did that about five times. And I was like, holy cow, never do that again. Because you're scaring the life out of people. Okay, number one. Number two, do not believe what you read on the internet where it says that you should ignore your dog if your dog is scared. Don't believe that. First of all, as a dog mommy, I'm just saying, that's not nice. If your dog is panicked, comfort your dog. You will not make your dog more scared. However, recognize that if all your dog has is you, you are creating pathology. In other words, you're creating a hyper dependent on you or a hyper attachment to you that will in the long term not be beneficial. So if your dog is trembling and he likes to be hugged or he likes to be petted or he wants to sit on your lap, right? Then let him do that and then seek help so that you will have coping tools so that your dog will be able to cope by himself. Number three, do not think that what you buy over the counter is the same as from your vet. And I know that that can sound self-service. Like you should go to your vet and always buy things from your vet. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you should get input from your veterinarian because everything you put in your dog's mouth has an effect. And some things, like I've been seeing a lot of CBD oil coming through my practice, a lot of patients on it, guess what I've been seeing? A lot of elevated liver enzymes on CBD oil. Someone picks it up from the grocery store or the pet food store or wherever, and they give it to their pet. You don't know what's in that bottle. So now I'm seeing dogs whose livers are undergoing injury because we're willy-nilly giving them things in brown bottles from the grocery store. So consult your vet. It doesn't mean you do everything that she tells you to do, but you at least get her consultation. She knows whether your pet is healthy enough to take one thing or the other. And I'll give you one more example because it's fresh in my mind. Yesterday, I saw an aggressive dog, and they wait sometimes very long to see me, three or four months, sometimes five months. So then... People try to find solutions, okay? And she was on a, that dog was on a very good supplement called Solifun, very good. 
And, uh, but the owner was giving it at the label note. So she said, it hasn't worked. And I said, because you're not giving it right. And she goes, what? And I said, yeah, right. So I wouldn't have dosed it this way. So it, I could have told you it would never have worked at this dose. So just by calling her vet, she might have seen a difference from a good supplement that she's going to give up on. Okay, so number one, um, don't overexpose your dog. Number two, comfort your dog and also give them coping tools. And number three, please don't give your dog the stuff that you find at the grocery without talking to your vet. Fantastic. And is there anything else that you wanted to include today or um, anything that you'd like to say um, about the Purina products? Well, I think that I've said kind of all that I have to say about calming care, and it is really truthful. We do use the heck out of it. Uh, We have liked it from the beginning. Our patients like it. I do want to, again, I'm always about educating people. I want them to know about our website. It's free. It's not password protected. We update it regularly. I really want them to get education. I told you about dog nerds, um, dot thinkific.com for treatment. And then I also have a book from Fearful to Fear Free, very, again, not expensive, that will help people to treat their fearful and anxious and stressed pets from fearful to fear free. So I'm hoping with this podcast that you and I can change some lives because that's really what it's all about, you know? Absolutely. Education is is key, especially in so many different areas of pet care. You know, I hear from people all the time that I, I didn't realize, I didn't know they they have been a pet owner even sometimes for many, many years, but something comes up like you adopt a dog with anxiety and they just haven't experienced it before and it's all about education. So um, that's what the podcast is all about and I really appreciate you coming on today and, and sharing your information with our listeners. Thank you for caring and thank you for highlighting this subject. Thanks for listening, guys. This was really a great informational podcast. I really uh, appreciate talking to experts like Lisa who uh, know their stuff and can give us some more information about some of the hottest topics in the pet industry. If you wouldn't mind jumping on our website, theoryofpets.com, you can leave me a quick review and that helps when I reach out to experts in the industry to try to uh, get them to come on the podcast and speak with us. And of course, if you have any questions uh, about your pet or something that's going on with your pet or just something that you You've been wondering chances are there are other pet owners out there that have been wondering the same thing so uh, when you're on our website theoryofpets.com you can leave suggestions for future podcasts there as well and i will be happy to help you answer your questions i will be back with another hot topic very soon